two of Cavuto Coast to Coast. Good to be with you today. I'm Connell McShane filling in for Neil. Great uh, bounce back day, right, for the markets. We've had plenty of volatility this month. The Dow is still on pace for its worst month going back to 2015, even with the 300 plus point advance that we've seen today. Vice Chair of the Federal Reserve, Richard Clarida, made some comments in the last hour. Further gradual interest rate hikes are appropriate as wages tick up, said Clarida. Now, looking at some big winners today, tech, Microsoft, Terrific report last night. Intel, Pfizer, all are up today. And, you know, market watchers are looking for some big uh, numbers tonight. Not only Intel, but the big ones, Amazon and Alphabet, the parent company of Google. Jared Levy joins us. So does Craig Smith. And the great Jerry Willis is uh, manning the fort down there on the New York Stock Exchange floor uh, for us in terms of where the market is headed. Jared, let me start with you on the bounce back, right, that we've, uh, we've seen today because we're trying to figure out where we are in all of this, meaning the recent sell-off, because it's been a terrible month right. uh, for stocks, and you have a lot of theories out there. Some people say, well, this is just the start of it. But others say that maybe we're close to finding some sort of a near-term point where we stabilize, we get some decent earnings tonight from those big techs that I mentioned, and, and we're back off to the races. What do you think? Well, Connell, it's great to see you again. And, yeah. and I could say that, you know, right off, right off the bat, I, I think a lot of what we're seeing now is, is reactionary. Remember, in the short term, this market's controlled by emotion, by algorithms, by headlines. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the stuff we're seeing, it was started off as a knee jerk, right? Uh, just people sort of taking some profits ahead of the uh, midterm elections. But then there's an actuality. In other words, as this thing follows through and we start to break down through technical barriers like the 50 day moving average, yes. the 200, then then people start to rethink things, right? Then they're thinking, well, is this for real? Is this a sell-off? Is this something I need to be concerned with? And again, get back to what drives us in the long term, and that is earnings. That is economic growth. And, and from an earnings perspective, just stripping out all of the noise, it looks pretty good right now. Uh, and, and again, I, I think from a tech perspective, some of the names you mentioned look good so far. I do want to hear from some of the bigger yeah, names we've got tonight. yet on deck. But yep. yeah, I, I think I think moving forward again, the attention needs to turn to what's really happening here. And again, what are the results of those midterm elections? I do think okay. that's still kind of a stumbling block. I want to talk about that. That's kind of a wider discussion. Jerry's actually done some reporting. I'm going to get to this in a second, Jerry. Let me bring Craig in first on the earnings uh, front, because all week and last week, I think we heard this whole idea. We're at peak earnings. You know, this is the best it's going to be. Um, you know, the best is behind us. We're not going to be able to sustain that. Now we've seen since then some more numbers, some very, very impressive. We had some good numbers last night. We'll see what happens tonight. What do you think of we're Craig, where corporations are right now? Or have they kind of topped out in terms of their growth, or are you confident we can sustain some of the uh, growth rates we've seen going into the future? Because that, as Jared says, should be what drives markets, right? Yeah, a absolutely. And I'm so glad Jared hit on something that, that very few people are talking about, but Jared brought it up. Mm -hmm. And that is the algorithm trading. The computer trading is really affecting these swings dramatically in right. both directions. Uh, I know one program, for example, called You Don't Know Jack that's making a ton of money in these markets right now. So that, that's a, <laughs> that that's really very... The name of it? Yeah. yeah, it's that's the name of the program. You don't know Jack or the circus has come to town. That's another one. But 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 the point is, Con Connell, yeah. we have a different world today than we had just two years ago. And let me show it to you. Take two seconds. Yep. We now have an agreement with Mexico. We now have a new agreement with Canada. We now have agreements in theory with the European Union, with Japan, with Germany. This president has basically built a trade coalition that says the two largest economies in the world, Japan and China, are no longer going to have an uneven playing field. We're going to open up our markets, or we're not going to open up, or you're going to open up your markets, or we won't open up our markets. Mm -hmm. And I think that's got corporate boardrooms around America saying, look, we can take this much higher. We can like make a whole the lot more money. Is, if we get the question on that, though, is like, because you, you're getting at China, the question is whether or not we're anywhere close to an agreement with China. And it doesn't look like we are. Right. Not so, even close. Right. So that's the kind of gives you a little pause in that theory. You know what I mean? That's what gives you a little pause in that theory. Yeah, it's great. We have these other agreements, but we got a long way to go. But I think China. he's going to win, Connell. That's the point. I think he he's might, in a position now to get the Chinese to do what he wants. Right. I'm just talking about timetable. That's the question. But you're right. That's, he might. But it's a question of how long he takes to get there. I do want to talk about midterms for a second. Jared brought it up a second ago. And this has been all over the map, right, Jerry, the last few days. I mean, I think. 
Larry Kudlow got some people worked up the, the other day in the White House driveway. He was talking about the idea that he thought when the market was down, you could, he, you know, you could make this argument if you're on the Republican side. He's, well, this is because they're, they're worried about the Dems taking the House. And now, now it's up. I don't know what he'd say today. Now it's up 300 points. I, I, I do have some, you know, it's, I was a little skeptical of that about how, because months ago, I thought the bet was in the Democrats would take the House, and I didn't know what had changed. But I know you've done some reporting, some, you know, talking to people about this. What are you hearing on that front in terms of how midterms affect elections? Well, or, for or a baseline, market, yeah, yeah, well, well, for a baseline here, this particular election, people are concerned about it down here. I do have traders telling me they're worried about the election because to the degree that the Democrats do well, they're worried about the agenda. What happens to tax policy, particularly corporate tax policy? What what happens to the regulatory framework? The president's been super successful in pulling away the regulatory framework. Those are all positives for stock. This idea that America's open for business, that starts and ends with Trump. It really comes from him. To right. so agree the Dems make inroads, that's important. But let me make another point here because we're all obsessed with Congress and the Capitol Hill, right? Well, there are 36 races for governor's seats as well. And these folks, particularly in the Midwest, mm -hmm. Michigan, Illinois, they have instituted new policies for taxes, lower taxes, okay. lower corporate taxes. That could be at stake as well. So there's a lot at stake in this election. It's not all baked in the cake. Really big questions about those governor's races. Fair point on the, uh, that's definitely a fair point on the governor's race. We probably don't talk as much as we should about kind of state tax levels because that leads into all the stories of why is so and so going from, you know, California to Texas or Greenwood to Florida, whatever the case may be, that, that that stuff really matters. And sometimes we're kind of too big picture talking about national races. But to the point about whether or not the Dems taking the House was either Jared baked in the cake or now it's some sort of a realization that people are coming to this week. My question, every time someone's brought it up, it's not just Kudlow, by the way, others have brought that up this week, is that right. put the momentum, if anything, look like, uh, I was talking about this last hour, and the enthusiasm numbers look like maybe it was on the Republican side here late in the cycle, but now you have people talking about the fact that the Democrats might take the House, which is what they were talking about six months ago. So uh, how is that interacting with markets in your view, Jared? Yeah, so I've been overlaying a lot of, uh, you know, polling results, if you will, with, with market behavior. And, and, and it's interesting. Again, it, remember, it, it's slightly tied together. I do believe that, you know, if, if, if Dems, you know, gain control of the House, let's just say, Trump does have certain things that he can use to, to execute his plan. Obviously, it becomes much harder. Um, I, I think there's a direct correlation there. The bigger thing right, here, the overarching question, thing— Didn't we know that? Did, weren't we already assuming that? That's what I was asking. No, no, I think you a lot of that so. went away. I think that I no, no. I, I think that there was more of a chance. If you look at um, probabilities, I think Republicans have gained some ground. Right, that was actually my point. Recently, That's uh, my point. Yeah. You know, so the Republicans yeah, yeah. did better now. So it's like, why now are we suddenly worried? You know, when Cudlow brought it up the other, why now as opposed to back? then when the probabilities were better. That's, that, that's my point. That's well, why I don't know how, how much it's driving markets. Yeah, and that's, and that's a fair, and, and again, a fair argument. Let's not forget interest rates, big part of this equation. And, and talking yeah. about trade, this big, strong U.S. dollar, if it continues on this, we could have the that's greatest right. trade in the world. That's but true. if Europeans can't afford to buy our stuff or if Asians can't afford to buy our stuff, eh. You know, all that all that trade agreement does very right. little. So, so again, it's, it's a dollar. But you're right. Uh, Craig, that, that is a, a fair point, because you're the one who brought up trade, right? So a lot sure. of companies, you get a bunch of companies that just say, hey, the tariffs have X amount of impact. I know we heard that from Caterpillar and 3M to some extent. I interviewed the Ford CFO last night to some extent there. But kind of a lead, Texas Instruments was kind of hinting at it without saying it's a direct impact. But on the dollar, a lot of companies, that strong dollar, right, if you're a big international company, that's an issue. Absolutely, it's an issue. And keep in mind, Colin, that, you know, this is not like we've reversed the trend. Since 1971, the U.S. dollar has been in a long-term bear market. Yes, it's, it's screaming right now. And, and Jared's right. It could, it could increase our trade dramatically. But what happens when we reach that tipping point when the dollar is so strong, people can't afford to buy our goods and services? Right. That could have a real impact on the market. Well, last point, Jerry, on today. Yeah. Uh, God, no, they'll make whatever point you were going to make. I won't even ask you well, a question. Well, so what I wanted to say, basically, is talking to traders 
yesterday, which is basically all I've been doing for the past two days here. What they want to see tonight to see if we're actually going to break out of this is they want to see a strong performance at the close. Why? Because we've sold off at the close for days now. So they Absolutely. don't want to just see a 100 point mm -hmm. gain. They don't want to see a 150 point gain. They want to see at least a 250 point gain tonight. Interesting. To, to really feel like we've turned the corner. I Will think, we? I also don't think know. tomorrow night, uh, you know, because we'll have already, yeah. we'll have the numbers tonight from, from the big ones, from Amazon and Google, and then should say alphabet, but we'll have those numbers tonight. And then how did the stocks trade tomorrow? That'll be really interesting, especially if they well, report good numbers. they're getting rewarded today for having good numbers. Yes, Microsoft yes. getting rewarded, Tesla getting rewarded, that's true. Twitter. You see all of them getting rewarded. So we, I believe that's good news here. It, it is, because remember, Netflix didn't get rewarded. And they were way up, and then all of a sudden it, it gave back the gains. Anyway, thanks to all three of you. Very, very good discussion on, um, on this crazy world that we're living in. In the meantime, one of the things that's been factoring into all of this is the stories that start.